Hi, Miracle St. Kids Church. I'm Juliana de Cruz. Today we're going to worship and have fun at the same time. So, before we worship and have fun, will you pray with me? Dear God, bless Pastor Franklin and Mr. David. And bless all my Miracle City friends. And we know, we thank you for this beautiful planet and earth. Um, it doesn't matter if you're white or black. And it, we still love you in this house. We know the coronavirus is still here. But we can defeat it because we're more. And it's only one. Amen. Hi, everybody. Life is a Miracle City mission statement together. We exist. We exist so that people so that people will experience so that people will experience the miracle of life. The miracle of life. The miracle of life. So that people will experience the miracle of life. The miracle of life in Jesus Christ. The miracle of life in Jesus Christ. We exist. We exist so that people will experience the miracle of life in Jesus Christ. Hi, my name is Shalisa Eckert. I'm six years old. I know why Jesus loves me because he died for my sin. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Hi, my name is Alan and I'm eight years old. Hi, my name is Asher and I am eight years old, but the second oldest brother in the house. Hello, and I am 10 years old, the oldest brother. We'll be inviting everyone who participates in our worship and those who are looking to send us a, a short clip, a short video of what they're thankful for so that we can let it be part of our worship experience in the coming week. And so here are our Gilmore brothers who are now going to show with us what they are thankful for. I think, Alan, you're first. Tell us what you're thankful for. I'm thankful for God because he's always loving us even though we sin. I'm, I'm thankful for having another chance at life so that, so that, I, so that we can prove that we're worthy of God's of eternal life. Wow. And I'm thankful for my parents because if I couldn't, if I couldn't live with parents, how would I learn how to live, how to do anything? And that goes for everybody else. If, if nobody had parents, then how would they be able to grow up yeah. and afford stuff? So I'm definitely thankful for my parents. That's, that's amazing. I'm sure your parents are delighted to hear that you guys are thankful. Nice seeing you guys, and stay stay safe, okay? Bye! Bye. Bye. Well, friends, um, we're going to be inviting you to be part of our worship experience in the upcoming week. And to do that, we're asking you to, to send a quick video of what you are thankful for, you um, and your family, what you're thankful for. Just send a quick video um, to our email address, and it's, it's, it's listed there, children at miraclecitychurch.org. Send a quick video, you know, it could be 30 seconds, it could be 60 seconds, not too long. Send a quick video, just, just sharing what you're thankful for and you send it to children at miraclecitychurch.org. Um, we would like to receive those videos no later than next Tuesday. That's Tuesday, the 17th of November. Send us a quick video to children at miraclecitychurch.org. Let's continue to be thankful for all that God has done. Hey kids, when you wash your hands, you can sing the song. Make sure you wash them for 30 seconds. Have a good day and stay healthy. I will wash, wash, wash my hands, wash my hands, wash my hands. I will wash, wash, wash my hands. Till the germs are gone. 
I will wash, wash, wash my hands, wash my hands, wash my hands. I will wash, wash, wash my hands till the germs are gone, till the germs are gone. My God loves me and all the wonders I see. The rainbow shines to my window. My God loves me. Boys and girls, I guess the first thing that you can realize is that it's raining. It's actually blowing in on me. You can see my t-shirt getting wet. Actually, it's coming in so hard, but I, I, I've determined that I won't move. So don't be distracted by the rain today. Well, um, I wanted again to share with you from John chapter 16, verse 16. And I guess because rain is falling, I'll probably move quickly. So stay with me. Are you guys ready? Here we go. John chapter 16, verse 16, and in whatever version you're reading, uh, Jesus, uh, the word says that uh, God told the disciples and those around him, he says, in a little while, again, you won't see me. And then in a little while after, you will see me again. In a little while, again, you won't see me. And a little while again, you will see me. When I read it, it almost reminded me of that, like a good old hide-and-seek game. You know, here I am, come find me. Um, or, or even a game of peekaboo. You know, peekaboo kind of looked at that passage. And, I, and here is what I wanted to share with you today. Of course, as you study with your families and on your own, you would recognize that Jesus was preparing uh, his disciples and his friends and those who loved him. He was preparing them because he was getting ready to to go through an experience that, that speaks to our salvation, right? Our being saved. And he was getting ready to, and was preparing them that he was going to be, he was going to be arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, that he was going to be tried in justice, and he was going to be uh, uh, brutalized, and then eventually he was going to be killed. He was going to be crucified, all for our sins. It's part of the plan. Could we say it's part of the plan? part of the plan. And, and so in preparing them, he said, listen, I'm saying all this to you, but I need you to understand as well that, you know, you're going to see me, but you won't see me, and then you'll see me again. Here, here I am, and in a little while after this, you know, you won't see me, but in a little while you see me. He was speaking to a number of things. He was speaking to the fact that he would be crucified and they won't see him, and that he would be buried in a borrowed, in a borrowed tomb, and then they won't see him, but in a little while after that, they would see him because he would rise again. We get to see Jesus through the Holy Spirit. We get to see Jesus through nature. We get to see Jesus through the kindness of our friends and our families. And we get to, to put Jesus on display. Yeah, that's right. We get to reflect Jesus in everything that we do. Jesus is coming again. You know, as again, as I was studying... Uh, that time where Jesus would be crucified and rose again, I came up on a, a very significant number in the Bible, and I've been sharing this with you for the last three weeks, and here it is again. So my question is, do you know how long Jesus stayed on earth after he resurrected before he ascended into heaven? Let me ask again. Jesus was killed. He lay in the tomb for three days, right, boys and girls? And then he rose again, but he didn't immediately go on to the Father. He wasn't ascended immediately to the heaven. He stayed on earth and he made a few appearances to his disciples and friends. He stayed on earth for 40 days before he finally ascended into heaven. There goes 40 again. Wow. I, I promise you, boys and girls, as you spend time in God's Word, His Holy Spirit is going to make so much truth available and known to you so that you know how to live your best Jesus life. Jesus said, in a little while you won't see me again, but in a little while longer you will see me. Boys and girls, I can't wait to see Jesus. I am holding on. Boys and girls, I am, I am determined day by day through the power of God. Could we say through the power of God and His Holy Spirit? Let's be determined to live like Jesus and live for Jesus. Join me as we pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you that we will see you again. That's it. Thank you, God, 
that we will see you again. And I pray that our boys and girls and everyone listening will hold on to that, that truth, will hold on to that reality, will hold on to that promise. God, you have never broken your promises. Your promises are true. So today, God, we trust you and we thank you for your soon coming. In Jesus' name, we will all say amen, amen, and amen. Good morning, happy Sabbath. I am Kimberly Gillen and I am the director of the Miracle City Diamonds Adventure Club. And what you just saw was just a few of the fun things that we do every first and third Sabbath at Miracle City Church. This year, we will be completely virtual, but we would love to have you join us. If you have never been a part of our club and you would like to learn more, please email me at at adventurers at miraclecitychurch.org and I will send you some more information. Have a great day and I hope to see you soon. Well, boys and girls, it's time. Please remember that Jesus loves you first, Jesus loves you best, and he loves you always. At Miracle, we exist so that people will experience the miracle of life in Jesus Christ. And we have four values that we believe help us to live that miracle. They're simple. We want you to experience love, commit to learn, rise to lead, and then choose to live. No matter how great my week may have been, one of my favorite times of the week is noon on Saturdays. That's when I get to meet up with my family at Miracle City for our worship experience. From the time I receive a hug from the greeters at the bottom of the stairs when I enter the building to when I walk back to my car after service, the love of Miracle City surrounds me. When I first got to Miracle, knowing that there were people who were happy to see me, remembered my name, and were genuinely interested in getting to know me made me want to keep coming back. And then we have our worship service, which really just brings you in and just opens up your heart and your spirit so you can be receiving of the word. And it's just the love that you feel here. Miracle is filled with love and that's the main draw for me. You, you feel a part of a family. There's also lots of love for children at Miracle. Our children's worship services teach me about Jesus through music, games, crafts, and Bible stories. I love playing with my friends and learning about Jesus. Church is about growing my relationship with Jesus. My small group core really helped me with that. I'm a member and leader of CORE, our young adult group here at Miracle City, and CORE stands for Connect, Obey, Restore, and Elevate. Our group provides a place for young adults to grow spiritually and socially. One of the reasons I love CORE is that it provides a safe place for us young adults to have practical Bible study as well as genuine fellowship. CORE is also where I have made some of my best friends to be in a young adult group where there's a lot of people my age who um, are doing similar things that I'm doing um, and was still like spiritually um, active and searching for God and trying to develop a relationship with God was pretty cool to me. At Miracle City, we're taught that every person has gifts and abilities that God wants to use for His glory. Growth Track is a reoccurring four-week session where we learn about our own spiritual gifts, identify our personal gifts, and then rise to lead in that capacity. So many people struggle with understanding what their purpose is and whether there is a place for them at church. At Miracle, we believe that leadership is influence. Nothing more, 
nothing less. At Miracle City, we've discovered that living your best life happens when serving others. Once you go through growth track and you know what your gifts are, it's easy to know where you should serve. A lot of people think serving happens on the praise team or by being an elders, but there are so many other ways and so many other things that you can do to serve others and serve God. There are so many ways to serve at Miracle. I'm more of an introvert, but I love keeping things running. I love details. They bring me so much joy, and it's been phenomenal to be in a place where my personality and my passion can be expressed freely. And Miracle has shown me that the way to do that is to make a choice to live my life, making a difference in the lives of others. So look, I wanna invite you to experience the miracle of Jesus Christ for yourself by attending a worship experience, by connecting in one of our grow groups, by discovering your purpose through growth track, or by living your best life by serving on a ministry team. Look, I promise you, you will not regret it. Hello, Miracle City family. My name is Susanna, and I want to take a moment to extend a very warm welcome to you. And thank you for joining us today. If you are visiting for the first time, we are so excited that you've stopped by and we encourage you to pop any questions you have into the chat or comment section. We have hosts that are here that will get all of your questions answered. If you are a regular Miracle City member, I miss you. And we thank you for joining us. This worship experience would not be the same without you. As we always do at this time, I ask that you take a minute to share the experience to your social media feeds. I know that many people who'd love to experience this warmth and positive message that we share every week. So share it with them. Now, we know that some people are not on social media, so we ask that you send a text and you ask your friends to join us at miraclecitychurch.org. They can watch us there too. I wanna to remind you that every Wednesday at 8 p.m., we get together to pray for our church family during our Recharge Zoom prayer session. Now, if you're feeling overwhelmed, um, stressed out, if you have something to share about how God has blessed you exceedingly or abundantly or just how he's brought you through the week, or even if you want to connect and see our faces, this is a perfect time to do this. So please join us on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. If you have a specific prayer request and you want us to pray for you, we ask that you email that prayer request to prayer at miraclecitychurch.org. Now, I am thrilled to see you. Um, I ask that you share the worship experience, and I pray that you will receive the blessing that you have come seeking. Have a great afternoon. Hi, Miracle City. Melissa Andrews here. So happy to have you with us today. I want to take a minute on behalf of the media department to say thank you to all of our members who every week respond to our texts or emails or phone calls asking us to help with the worship experience by recording the welcome or by recording the prayer. We could not have our worship experience without you all taking part and we are really, really appreciative of all of the work that you do. I want to take a few minutes now just to let everyone know how you can participate later in the service when Pastor Franklin calls for the offering. Um, at Miracle here, we don't want anyone to feel obligated to give. We ask that you give if you're impressed, that you want to support the kingdom work that we're doing here. This information is going to pop up on the screen as I share it. 
If you'd like to give uh, using your debit card, just head over to our website at miraclecitychurch.org slash give. You can also give using PayPal, and that email address is treasure at miraclecitychurch.org. You also have the option to text in your offering. Uh, the first time you do this, you'll walk through a couple of steps to set it up, but after that, you'll just text the amount that you want to give, and that'll be it. You will text to 84321 and follow the prompts, and it'll get you all set up. Lastly, you can still mail your tithe and your offering to the church, but we can't accept cash, so please only send checks. I want to make sure that you are staying in touch with us and getting all of the information about events that are happening here. And you can do that by signing up for our e-newsletter. If you aren't getting it, just go to miraclecitychurch.org slash stay in touch. Give us your email address and you'll be in the know. I also hope that you're following all of our social media accounts. We're on Twitter. Facebook and Instagram. And you should also subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll get automatically notified anytime we go live with an event. Again, thanks so much for being with us today. Please say hi in the chat. I'd love to connect with you. And um, it's just always nice to see our members uh, interacting together. I hope you have a great worship experience and a great rest of the week. Welcome to Miracle City.
Good afternoon and happy Sabbath, Miracle City. We want to thank you for joining us this week. Thank you so much for joining us in this worship experience. At this time, we are about to go before the Lord's throne and go boldly. God already knows what you need. So would you join me and find a posture of prayer as we seek his face? Let us pray. Loving God, our friend, our father, the one who sees and hears and knows all things. We, your sons and daughters, we come into your presence with thanksgiving. We enter into your gates with praise. We want to thank you and bless your holy name because you are a good God and you're a forgiving God. And you're a God who is full of mercy and full of grace. We want to thank you. We want to thank you for today. We want to thank you for waking us up today. Thank you for starting us on our way. Thank you for clothing us and clothing us in our right mind. We thank you for the provisions. We thank you for your healing. We thank you for being who we need you to be at every moment. We can just call on you. And whatever we need, you will provide. We just want to thank you. Because we know you didn't have to do it, but because you're a loving God. That's all you do is just love on us and we appreciate it. I just pray right now, Father, for our families who are really still struggling with illness. The COVID virus has not gone away and many are still being under attack. Countrywide, the United States really struggling with this virus and it's touching the Christian community will you please heal the, heal the bodies that are ravished with this disease I pray for our regular sick and shut in members loving God they don't have the ability to go out and you know them well send the Holy Spirit to comfort them send someone if they are in need of anything that they will provide it let them suffer no lack. I pray for families that are struggling financially right now. Members, uh, a member may not have, uh, a family member may not have a job. There could be a, multiple reasons why there's financial trouble in the home, but you're a provider. So Jehovah Jireh, do what you do. And I pray that the families will trust you all the more. I pray for families who are struggling in their relationships with their children jehovah shalom we pray for peace we pray for unity and understanding holy spirit will you come in and unify the home whether it's in the marital relationship or parent and child relationship bless our children bless the homes i pray father for the bereaved in our membership we pray for the Winstead family who has sustained another loss. Three months in a row, they've lost so many members. And so we ask that you will bless them as they are mourning the loss of a brand new child into this world. God, I pray that you will continue to comfort them. We are so excited for three families in our church that have welcomed three brand new baby boys thank you so much father i pray that you will give them what they need they're exhausted they're tired they're happy they're up they're down the emotions range but they are so grateful and so father please cover and keep these brand new babies Please mark them for your glory and for your purposes and your plans. We pray for the members in our church that are carrying children now. Would you bless them and keep them free from COVID? I pray for the families that want to start a family. Loving God, will you help them to be fruitful and multiply? We look to you, Father, for the source of everything that we need. We ask that you will be with our pastor right now. Please, God. Fill him with your Holy Spirit. The words that he is going to speak, loving God, is life. Life and light. So 
so God, I pray that you will remove these stony hearts and give us hearts of flesh so that as these seeds fall, they fall on fertile ground. We pray that as he speaks, that we are convicted in our spirit and we repent and turn from our wicked ways. You are so soon to come and we want to be ready. We want to be ready to see you when you are seen coming in the clouds of glory. So Father, until then, bless us and keep us and cause your face to shine upon us. Be gracious towards us. Lift up your countenance and give us your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and happy Sabbath. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. If you're glad that you've got Jesus, will you just lift your hand wherever you are and say amen for all the good and great things our God continues to do. I'm Pastor David B. Franklin, lead pastor here at Miracle City Church, where we exist so that people will experience the miracle of life in Jesus Christ. And, and I'm believing as we do each and every week that God is performing miracles all throughout our community, all throughout our family, and, and even all over the world. Uh, there is still some, some sense of being unsettled and, and maybe some things that, that aren't the way that you would like them to be. But I would encourage you to just cling and hold on to God, to continue to lean into his word, lean into his voice, uh, uh, open up your heart to receive more of his spirit so that you can walk more fully in the power that he has promised to all of us. Well, we're going to get into the word today, but as I do each week, there's three things I want to remind you of. First, if you have children, make sure they're connected to our kids worship experience at 1145. If you are a young person or if you have youth in your house, please have them send an email or you send an email for them to youth at miraclecitychurch.org so that they can get connected to all of the great things that are happening in our youth ministry. And if you're a young adult, please make sure you plug in to young adults, our young adult ministry here at Miracle City, which is called CORE. And you can email youngadults at miraclecitychurch.org. And if there is anything else that you want to know about, you want to be uh, uh, aware of all the great things God is doing through this congregation, I would love for you to go to miraclecitychurch.org slash stay in touch so that you can get all the updates uh, that we provide each and every week so that our family, our community, our church members can stay connected during this time. Well, it's time for us to get into the word of the Lord, and I'm excited to share with you today. So let's bow our heads and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we take this moment to surrender it to you, for you and you alone are worthy of all of our praise. Lord, breathe on us as we open our understanding to your spirit. In Jesus' name we do pray. Come on, everybody shout, amen and amen. Listen, we're going to Revelation. I know we were in Revelation a few weeks ago, but we're going to go back there. And this time we're going to Revelation chapter 15, and we're going to begin at the first verse. I'm going to share it from the new international version, but whatever version of the Bible you have is just fine. Again, we're going to Revelation chapter 15, beginning with verse 1. Here's what the word of the Lord says. I saw in heaven another great and marvelous sign, seven angels with the seven last plagues last because God's wrath is completed. And I saw what looked like a sea of glass glowing with fire and standing beside the sea, those who had been victorious over the beast and its image and over the number of its name. They held harps given them by God and sang the song of God's servant Moses and the Lamb. Great and marvelous are your deeds or your works, Lord God, the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the nations. Who will not fear you, Lord, and bring glory to your name? For you alone are holy all nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. I want to use this powerful passage of scripture to preach under the title, 
the assurance of the Almighty. The assurance of the Almighty. Look, this is this is a powerful passage of scripture. But, you know, sometimes when we are wading into uh, Revelation, some of us don't like to to read too much of it or get too deep into it because of all the apocalyptic language and imagery. Sometimes folks can get a little weary and scared about what is in the book of Revelation. But we need to remember when we're studying the book of Revelation that it is a revelation of Jesus Christ. That's that's how it opens uh, in the first chapter. It tells us that this book uh, is a revelation of Jesus Christ, meaning that as we read it, we get to see his character. We get to see his 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 end, his plan um, revealed in ways that other books of the Bible don't reveal it. And so it's a beautiful thing to be able to study it. And and here in this passage of scripture that we've that we've read, we get we get beautiful snapshots of Jesus. We get beautiful pictures of Jesus. And, and there are many in here, all that I can't cover in the time that we have. But, but, the, but the one that is most prominent, the one that, that stands out in the greatest way is, is when this song that is mentioned is, is referenced. It says, this is the song of the servant Moses. It, it's Moses' song. And this is beautiful uh, 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 language for us because it is a allusion back to when the children of Israel were brought out of Egyptian bondage. When they crossed the Red Sea, they are seen singing this song. And, and actually here in Revelation 15, this is a summary of the song. There's a little more, uh, it's a little more elaborate when they uh, came out of the, the, the Red Sea. But, but nevertheless, it's, it's the same song. It is the same song of victory. It's the same song of triumph. It's the same song of overcoming. It is the same song that the people of God who have walked with him, who have trusted in him, who have relied on him, are able to sing on the other side of trouble. It's a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing here, right in this this apocalyptic book and and in this apocalyptic chapter that is talking about the seven last plagues right here in this book, we get this beautiful song of victory that only the people who walk with God and are able to cross over to the other side are able to sing. And in this song of victory, it give us, gives us some pictures of God that we must see. And it starts with by saying this, great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God, the almighty. Now we got to stop right there because everything else in the song leans and is, is, is hung on this, this, this opening phrase. Great and marvelous are your ways or your deeds or your works, Lord God, the almighty. Now don't please, don't, don't miss that title. Don't miss that 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 name that is being given to God, because that's that's really the heart of what I want to share with you today, because I believe I believe with all my heart that there is something powerful that can help us understand who God is and how he wants to work each and every day of our lives right in this title here. He says, he says he's the Lord God, the Almighty. Now, following the, the principle of first mentions, we got to find out where this was first used in the book of Revelation because it's used like nine times in the book of Revelation. This title, the Almighty, is given to God nine times in the book of Revelation. And when we go back to the first time it was used, that's going to take us back to Revelation chapter one, verse eight. And we begin to see what that word really means and we're going to use that to unpack what God wants to say to us today. So here it is in Revelation chapter one, verse eight. Here's what the word of the Lord says. And this is actually God speaking about himself. He says, I am the alpha and the omega who is the one who is the one who was and the one who is to come, the Almighty. Ooh, don't miss it. This is good. This is good. Don't miss it. Right here, we find 
three designations of the God who is called the Almighty, Almighty, that give us an understanding of what Almighty means. Now, in a general sense, we know that Almighty is, is like the governing one, right? It is, it is the one who has, who has authority. It is the ruler. It is the one who, who is over territory. It is the one who is over uh, uh, um, uh, kingdoms and nations, the Almighty, the, um, the, omni, the uh, um, uh, omnipotent one, right? This is the one who has all power, Almighty, right? But, but this here in, in, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, expands that understanding of what Almighty really means because he says, I am Alpha and Omega. Now, for those of y'all who've been in church a little while, you know that Alpha and Omega is actually the beginning and the end of the Greek alphabet. The, the Greek alphabet begins with alpha and it ends with omega. If we were saying this in English, we would say that God is the A and he is the Z. Come on, somebody. He is the beginning and the end. But, but then he elaborates on what he actually is. He says, I'm not just the beginning and the end. I am the one who was I am the one who is to come and I am the one who is. Mm. When we look at this and we understand it in all of its context within the, the book of Revelation, we actually see that what God is trying to say about himself is he is the one who acts. He, he has acted in the past to create this world. He was there at creation, literally bending down into the dust of the ground and forming a, 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 a human being in the image of himself and then breathing into us the breath of life through our nostrils. And we became a living soul and it was because God did work he was acting he was he was he was active in the beginning of time creating this earth and creating humankind that we are here today and we know God will also act at the end of time for he will return he is the one who who is to come he is the one who is coming back for his children that is a God who is acting on our behalf to redeem us, to save us, to rescue us, to take us home, to live for an eternity. But he is not only the God who created, he is not only the God who is to come, but he is the God who is right now. That's right. That's right. He's in at the beginning, at the end, and he's in the middle. He's in the middle. And, and this is what we can understand about the almighty power of God. There's no aspect of existence that he is not engaged in. He exists outside of time and space, but he chooses to operate in time and space for our well-being and for our development and for our growth and for our nurturement. He is the one who continues to build us in the present so that we can arrive at the future. He was, he is to come, and he is right now. And so the question we ought to ask ourselves, question we ought to ask ourselves, what is this God doing right now? Uh, what is this almighty God doing in the present? We know that he created, he created at the beginning of time. We know that he is coming back again. Those are his good works that he's going to do. Those were his good works that he already did. But what is he doing right now? Well, we got to go back to Revelation chapter 15 to find out because, because that song illuminates for us what God is doing right now. The one who is, the God who is now, not just the God of your past, not just the God of your future, but the one who is operating right now. What is that God doing in the present? Well, the scripture says back in Revelation chapter 15 that great and marvelous are your deeds and then it the ends with for your righteous act have been revealed. What is God doing in the present? God is working righteousness. Oh, and, and, and maybe you could even say it this way. God is working righteously. Mm, he's working right in the middle and he's doing the righteous work that only he can. And, and I want to help you understand what that work looks like, because I believe it will encourage you and help you understand just how almighty God is. What is this righteous work that God is doing right here in the middle, 
right? We know he acted in the past. We know he's going to act in the future. But what is the actions? What is the work that God is doing in the present? Well, I first think that the first thing that we can see, not only from this passage, but from all of Re Re Revelation, that the righteous work that God does is prophetic. That's the first thing. It's prophetic, right? It is it is alluding to it is it is per, it is it is projecting, it is telling us, foretelling what will happen in the future. And and I know for some of us that has caused worry and fear, but but I just want to tell you the reason why reason why prophecy is important, the reason why God's prophetic word is important, and I'm gonna talk about those two separately in just a second, but the reason why these things are important is because what it says to us is that we have no need to worry, right? God has already, God has already seen what is gonna happen. God has already foretold what will happen. And so when it begins to happen, it may be difficult, I'll grant you that. It may be troubling, I'll grant you that. It may be heavy to bear, I'll grant you that. But we need not worry. We need not we need not worry that somehow we have all of a sudden entered into a space that God is unaware of, that God didn't know about, that God did not foresee, that God did not foretell, that somehow he has been caught by surprise. Nothing, come on somebody, nothing catches our God by surprise. Nothing catches our God off guard. Nothing catches our God unaware. God has, has always been in the business of knowing not only what has happened, but, not, not, but also what will happen. And so I want to encourage you that prophecy at its core, prophecy at, at its core is really meant to encourage God's people not to worry. Amen. It may give you an opportunity to say, yep, I got to get my life right because I know he's got it all under control. I know that he's doing uh, his his perfect will, even when it seems like the evil in the world is being over is overcoming the good of the world, even when it appears that way. I can trust that the God who has led his people for thousands of years, the God who had led the, led the children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage, ultimately into the promised land, that same God who led them, he will lead us through the times that feel like we are in the wilderness. The thing that we must learn, the thing that we must learn, and again, where prophecy can help us is not to become weary in well-doing. When you hit a, a wilderness, don't get weary. When you hit a time of uncertainty, don't throw in the towel because, because it is in that moment, it is in that time that we can lean into God and we can trust in God. It, it may be uncomfortable, it may be uh, 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 even confusing in the in the moment, but I want you to know that even if the situation is confusing, ultimately the plan of God is clear. It is it is clear. It is God is God is not mistaken. He has not he has not forgotten. He has not gotten tripped up. He has not gotten outmatched. He is victor, and he is in full. Control, And I just want to encourage somebody with that today that you may feel like 2020 has been a wilderness. And, and listen, I can agree with you on that. There has been a lot of challenges. There's been a lot of pain. There's been a lot of loss. There's been a lot of issues in 2020. But I want you to know, don't get weary in the wilderness because the prophetic word of the Lord tells us that if we are, are faithful and if we stay connected, God will lead us through the wilderness and we will get to the promised land. And, and this is a righteous work that God does for us, that he foretells what will happen so we will know that even when things appear to be out of control, he has everything right in the palm of his hand. That's a good thing. That's a good God that we serve, that he does that for us. He's got so much care for his children that he would in detail begin to tell us, foretell what would happen so that we could have certainty and security that the God we serve has it all in the palm of his hand. All right. First thing that he's first righteous work that he's doing is he is he is doing a prophetic work. Right. The, the, the work that he's doing is prophetic. The second thing, the second characteristic of his work is not only prophetic, but it is 
patient. Oh, it's so good. God's word, God's work is patient patient. And it's right there in the text. It says, who will not fear you, Lord, and bring glory to your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you. Oh, what, what, what are we, what are we getting at there? That, that God could have brought all nations to their knees already. He's got the power. We've just established that he is almighty. He's all powerful. He is the governing one, the ruling one, the one who is uh, omnipotent. He he is the one who could bring all nations to their knees right now. But 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 the God we serve is long suffering. He's long suffering. He is patient and patient in the scriptures, uh, it generally speaks to forbearance or endurance. And, and all that means is, is that, is that often what we see, the, what patience, uh, uh, what, what the scriptures use patience to communicate is, is a self-restraint, <laughs> a, a, a restraining, a, an ability to restrain oneself and hold on until the, time, the assigned time. And that's a beautiful thing because what God does in his righteous, righteous work is he is patient, not only with us, but with those who do not know him yet, those who may have known him, but have forsaken him, those who may have 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 turned their back on him, but they are beginning to turn back around to him. I, I'm talking about the God who is long suffering, the God who will go the extra mile, the God who will go the long distance, the God who is interested in not only your momentary decision, but your eternal decisions. I'm talking about the God. God who is faithful and just and wishes that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I'm talking about the God who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think. And when we have given up on him because he has not come through in the ways that we thought he would, he is still patient to wait for us so that our hearts can be returned unto our father. I want somebody out there to just thank God, not only for the prophetic work that he does, but for the patient work that he does. Amen. In fact, in fact some, some of us, you know, we want to get out of this. We want to be free from all of the headaches of the world. But one of the ways we can be part of what God is doing is to help others know who he is. Because because the God, the, the father that that we serve is trying to win as many as possible. And so if we want to engage and, and, and be part of what God is doing in this work of patience, we can we can help ourselves out even by bringing more on. Because if if God can get all of his children home, then he's going to return. And so I want to just encourage somebody out there that that I know that sometimes we've got to we've got to endure some difficult times. But I want to encourage you to lean into the, the characteristic of God of patience, which which is a self restraint. It is it is the ability to not do what your emotions tell you to do and what your feelings tell you to do, but to operate on the facts of who God is and that we understand that the, 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 the journey may not be, be all that we wanted it to be. In other words, it may not be flowers and roses every single day. We may have to go through some valleys, but know this, that the valley is not the end of the story. The valley is not the end of the journey. The valley is just the pass through to the mountain. Come on, somebody. We got to go through some valleys sometimes if we're ever going to be able to have the strength that is required to climb the mountain. Do not despise the valley. It's just preparation ground for the mountain. And so and so hang in there. Be patient with the good work that God is doing in the earth and the good work that God is doing in us. Can we just be honest for a second that that there's more work that God w wants to do, not only on other people, but 
but he wants to do it on us. Come on, somebody. Come on. All, your, all that, that anger you have hasn't been worked out yet. Come on. All of, all of that all of that, that gossiping you have hasn't been worked out yet. Come on, somebody. All that lying that, you're ten, that you tend towards, it ain't been worked out yet. Come on, let's just be honest. It's just you and me talking, right? Let's just be honest today that, that his patience is actually a benefit to us, not only so that we can know him in the sense of being saved from our sins and, and repenting and being baptized, but so that we can also grow in him. Amen. That we can also flourish in him, that we can also grow up in him. That's that's the God that I serve. The God that I serve is interested in 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 working out every part of our character so that we are more and more and more like him. That's that's the good God that we serve. So so when he is being patient with others, understand that that patience is also a benefit to you because there's some things that God wants to work out of us so that we can be more like him. Amen. 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 And so this is good work that God is doing. He's he's doing a prophetic work. He's doing a work that is patient. And last but not least, he's doing a work that is preemptive. Mm, please, please hear this. You got to get it because because this is a chapter. This is a chapter that is about the seven plagues. It's about the seven plagues, which means that it's the seven last plagues, to be clear, which means that these are the seven last plagues that God will release upon the earth before he comes. This is what it says. This is what's, what's in the word. Read, read chapter 15 and you'll see seven plagues that will be released on the earth. And it is the completion, according to Revelation, of God's wrath. But what is so beautiful about this 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 section of Revelation? It's not just chapter 15, but this section of Revelation is that before the plagues are poured out, John sees the victorious saints of God standing on the sea of glass. Oh, you missed it. You missed it. You missed it. In other words, in other words, in other words, the work that God is doing, the work that God is doing is 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 a work with which has the goal to create victory tours before the trouble comes. Come on, somebody, you got to get it. In other words, in other words, that even before the pain is here, even before the challenge arrives, even before the end is fully played out and prophecy is fully fulfilled, even before all of that happens, what God declares is that his children are already victorious. Oh, that's so good. His children are already seen as if they are standing on the sea of glass that if as if they are right before the throne of God, which means they have been sealed. They have been protected. They have been kept. They have been re uh, redeemed. They have been restored. And even the last of all of those plagues and God's wrath can't pull them out of the hand of God. I need somebody to just bless the Lord right there. I just want you to bless the Lord right there, because this is why I called it the assurance of the almighty. That's why I called the sermon the assurance of the almighty, because this is the beauty of the God that we serve, that before he rele He releases all of the, 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 the final wrath that he has, the Bible tells us that those who have walked with him will be saved from it. In fact, it is already predetermined that you won't have to worry about whether you're going to make it in if you are already in with the Lord. The Bible says that his children will be saved. And I need somebody in the, in the, in the building, that's right, our virtual building, to just bless the Lord that God, watch this, preempts the acts of the evil one to try to steal us out of his hand. See, because we taught, we call it God is even merciful in his description of, of uh, or even John's description of calling it God's wrath. Because what it really is, is that the, the devil has been trying, watch this, to overtake God's people and God keeps pushing it off. But there will become a time when God will not push off the devil any longer and he'll have rain to, to go and try to deceive whomever he may try to deceive. But the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us that God has already preempted. Come on, somebody. He has preempted 
preempted the work of the evil one to ensure that those who have been on the journey, those who have walked through the wilderness, those who have been singing the songs of blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir, I'm an heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of the spirit. And I've been washed in his blood. Those who have been born of the spirit, they've been washed of the blood. You may walk through the wilderness, but I'm telling you, whatever he throws at you, God has already preempted the strike of the evil one and has declared you will be victorious. Come on, somebody. I just I just want you to hear that today because we have had a lot happening in 2020. We've had a lot going on in our lives personally, in our lives, in our communities, in our lives, in, in this nation, in our lives, in this world. We've had a lot going on. But what God says is, I want you to know you have some assurance by being patient, not only with others, with, but with you. And I'm trying to tell you that you've got assurance because if you're walking with me, your promised land is guaranteed. And, and I just want someone to just thank God. Thank God that, that yet we may have some issues we're trying to work through. But ultimately, the, the people of God, those who say yes to his will and his way, will be preserved from all of the strikes of the enemy. God has preempted that so that we will be victorious. It's the assurance of the Almighty. He's the only one who could provide that kind of guarantee. <laughs> I, I know there's a lot of guarantees out there. I know there are, there's, there's a lot of guarantees. Your money back guarantee, you buy one, get one guarantee, right? There's a lot of guarantees and many of those guarantees can fail. But this assurance, this guarantee that we have from the Almighty is, is one that we are confident will not fail because he was at creation, creating us out of the dust of the earth. He has promised that he will be who we need him to be right in the very moment that we're in because he is. And then the Bible declares that he is the one to come. That's right. He's the one to come. He's the only one who could provide a total guarantee across time and space, across circumstance and issue, across pro problem and priority. He is the one who has provided the full guarantee that we can trust in him. And so I want somebody to have that assurance today that you may get down sometimes, but remember you have the assurance of the almighty. If you're a blood washed believer, you've got the assurance of the almighty. You've got the assurance of the one who created you, who has loved you. He came to die for you and he's coming again. The assurance of the almighty. And I want somebody to receive that today. I want somebody to say, you know what? I've heard it, I, I, I've, I've, I've thought about it, but I haven't actually accepted the assurance of God. Oh, I'm still, still worried that, that I'm gonna say a wrong word and then, then I'm gonna be taken out from the world. I'm gonna, still worried I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a wrong thing and then all of a sudden gonna walk out in the street and, and a bus is gonna hit me and I'm gonna lose my salvation. I, I want somebody to claim this assurance today that it's not about a moment, it's about the trajectory of our lives. When we're walking with God, I, 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 I want, you to, want you to claim your assurance today. It's one that God the Almighty has given to all that claim Him as their Father. Claim this assurance today and walk in the newness of life. If you're ready to receive it, if you're ready to say yes, I, I, I accept the assurance that I am one of God's children, and I, and I will live in eternity with him. Will you just raise your hand right where you are? Just raise your hand. And maybe you're saying today, you know what? I've never accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior. I've never fully surrendered to him. And today you want to surrender to him as your personal savior. Will you just raise your hand as well? Right where you are, that's right. I know it may feel odd, you're the only one there, but, but just raise your hand. And I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. And then after I pray, I'm going to invite you to go fill out some information for us so that we can walk with you on this journey. Come on, let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, what a wonderful God you are. What a mighty God you are. You are the Almighty. Father, and you continue to show us your power in amazing and miraculous ways. For that, we are grateful. 
And today, Father, I want to lift up the individuals who want to accept you as their personal Savior. They want to surrender to you for the first time. They want to invite you to be the, the Lord of their lives. Right now, Father, I pray as we are saying this prayer that each one of those individuals will open up their hearts. And Lord, I know that you will enter in. Father, for the person who's saying, you know what, I'm, I'm a believer, but I, I haven't claimed the assurance of my salvation. Then Father, I pray right now that each of those believers will say, you know what, I, I believe in the assurance, the, the guarantee that you will save those who walk with you. So Father, I, I surrender each of those individuals to you, Father, and I pray that all of us collectively will encourage one another along this journey. It may feel like we're getting weary sometimes, but may the testimony of our brothers and sisters encourage us to keep going and to stay focused on this journey. Now, Father, for all of us who need special prayer, Father, I pray that you will speak to each one of your children in only the way that you can. In Jesus' name I do pray. Come on, everybody shouts, amen and amen, amen. What a mighty God we serve. If you just made a decision today, if, if you made a decision to accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior, maybe you need to make a decision to join this congregation or you want special prayer, or even if you said, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm not connected here, but, but I just decided that I'm going to accept the assurance of my salvation today. Will you go to miraclecitychurch.org slash connect card, miraclecitychurch.org slash connect card. We would love to pray with you and walk with you on your journey of faith and growth in Jesus. So I'm looking forward to you doing that and looking forward to us staying connected. Well, this is the time in the worship experience where we get to share our gratitude and our thanksgiving to God through our giving. And I know Thanksgiving is coming up and it's gonna look a little different this year probably for many of us than it has in past years. Uh, but, but one thing is for sure, if you are, are watching this, that means that you have breath in your lungs, which means you have something to be thankful for. And so I want you to offer a, 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 an offering of Thanksgiving all throughout the month of November. Not only your regular tithe and offering, but, but choose one of the other uh, uh, ministries that we have here at Miracle City and make a generous contribution of thanksgiving just because of what God has done in your life and, and, and all that you have to be thankful for, right? Thanksgiving is a, is a day that has been put on our calendar here in the U.S. and other places in the world, but, but in truth, Every day should be a day of thanksgiving for the believer. And so I want to encourage you to make, at the very least, all of this month, all of this month of November, a, a, a thanksgiving where you give a special offering to God to just express your gratitude for all that he has done. Remember, we're trying to get as many people in the kingdom as possible, and your gifts will help us to do that. Well, there are a few options that are coming on the screen right now that will show you how you can give. You can text the amount you'd like to give to 84321, 84321, or you can go to our website, miraclecitychurch.org slash give and provide a, a donation there. You can use PayPal under the email address, treasurer at miraclecitychurch.org. And last but not least, you can send checks, not cash, to 100 South Rockland Road, Baltimore, Maryland, 21229. Well, I'm so grateful for all the gifts that are being given, and I want to pray over those gifts right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for who you are and how you guide our lives. We are nothing, we're nothing without you, but with you we have all that we need and more. And so, Father, we express our gratitude and our thanksgiving today. Lord, there's many ways that we can express it, and, and we, we want to do that. We want to share our testimony. We want to use our gifts. Those are all expressions of thanksgiving. And we also want to give generously. And so, Father, today, as your children are giving, as, as your people are giving, I pray that you multiply each and every gift 
for your name's honor and glory. We thank you, Father. Bless the gifts and the giver in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, listen, I'm so glad that you have partnered with us today, that you've worshiped with us today, that you're part of this community. It's a great thing to serve the God that we serve. He is he is all powerful and almighty. And I pray that you carry that into your week, that you carry that with you, that you're not just any old body. You are a son and or a daughter of the most high God. You are, you are a son or a daughter, a son or a daughter of the most high God. And he has all power in his hand. May you walk with that authority in your life and we will see you next week.